Despite being attached to direct the upcoming Marvel film Ant-Man since 2006, director Edgar Wright has left the project. A statement put out by Marvel said the following. Marvel and Edgar Wright jointly announced today that the studio and director have parted ways on Ant-Man due to differences in their vision of the film. The decision to move on is amicable and does not impact the release date on July 17, 2015. A new director will be announced shortly. Unconfirmed reports suggest that Marvel ordered a rewrite recently of Edgar's script, which significantly changed the story leading Wright to depart the film. John, your thoughts on Edgar Wright leaving Ant-Man? It's so unfortunate. It's really just so unfortunate. We, I mean, since 2006, we've been looking forward to Edgar Wright doing Ant-Man. And, and I think, you know, I, I've gotten a chance to hang out with Edgar a number of times. He's done some stuff with me. And, uh, and he's just like the nicest, sweetest, coolest guy. And it's so cool. And if we got this picture shortly, and now for those of you who know, Edgar Wright has done a, a series of films that they call Cornetto Trilogy. Mm -hmm. um, so after they announced that he was leaving the project, uh, director Joss Whedon, uh, took to his online presence and put up this picture. Let's bring up that picture holding up, you know, the head. Look, even Joss Whedon nails the lighting in this little <laughs> picture that he put together. Kind of a, you know, a, a sorry to see Edgar Wright go. Um, and it's got a lot of people speculating. Now, here's, this is where it gets dangerous. There are two separate reports going on online. Online, One is, is plausible, one's not so much. One report said that Marvel fired him because he was falling behind on production schedule and wasn't able to get everything caught up to speed. But for most things that I'm reading, that was just nonsense. Mm -hmm. There's another report that w is completely unconfirmed, but it, it seems to hold some weight to it, that basically says a number of months ago, Marvel came back to Edgar and said, we need to make these changes, and had some changes about the morality of the lead character and one or two other key Marvel Universe characters they wanted to include in the script. That's not unlike what Marvel did with Joss Whedon on the first Avengers. Mm -hmm. Remember, Marvel went to, to Whedon and said, no, you gotta change this, just this, and he did it, and it turned sure. out great, as it turns out. Um, so Edgar Wright did a rewrite of the script, and Marvel didn't like it. So Marvel got uh, one of their in-house writers, completely separate from Edgar, to do a rewrite, and when they submitted it to, to Edgar to read, apparently they had completely changed. It was a different movie. Edgar didn't want to do that movie. Marvel did, and so they decided to part ways after eight years of being on this project. Now, uh, there's a, people can, can speculate a lot. What I thought was really interesting is another director of an upcoming Marvel film, James Gunn, who was on this show uh, about a month or so ago, he weighed in on this and put out a statement. I'm just going to read this statement that James Gunn made, and I think it's a pretty brilliant statement, but here's what he said. James Gunn, writing about the departure of Edgar Wright, he goes, sometimes you have friends in a relationship. You love each of them dearly as individuals and think they're amazing people. When they talk to you about their troubles, you do everything you can to support them, to keep them together, because if you love them both so much, doesn't it make sense that they should also love each other? But little by little you realize, at heart, they aren't meant to be together. Not because there's anything wrong with either of them, but they just don't have the personalities that mesh in a comfortable way. They don't make each other happy. Although it's sad to see them split, when they do, you're surprisingly relieved and excited to see where lives take each of them next. It's easy to try to make one party right and another party wrong when a breakup happens but it often isn't that simple. Or perhaps it's even more simple than that. Not everybody belongs in a relationship together. It doesn't mean they're not wonderful people. And that's true of both Edgar Wright and Marvel. One of them isn't a person, but I think you get what I mean. I think, you know, one of the things that we're, for, like everybody likes to jump up and down, first of all, and support the artist and blame the man. Mm -hmm. You know, and Marvel in this case is the man. So everybody's like, well, this is the beginning of the downfall of Marvel, <laughs> yeah. dude. You know, throwing themselves in and interfering yeah. with the filmmaking process and, <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. But we often forget that they started this journey in 2006 before the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we know it today existed. Mm -hmm. And I think it's completely plausible at any rate that now what this Ant-Man concept and movie that looks so great in theory at one point, now when they then when Marvel sits back and looks actually at their existing cinematic universe and the tone of it and how it works to go, you know, this idea was great in 2006 and 2007, 2008, but it doesn't work for us anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I think what James Gunn is saying is, you could see the writing on the wall that, you know, you had one creative vision 
and then another force whose vision changed because the times have changed. Yeah. Um, not that right is out of out of time right. or anything like that, yeah. not at all. But he's saying, you know, James Gunn is saying, we could see this coming, that this wasn't going to work. So it's unfortunate, it's sad, but I don't blame Edgar, I don't blame Marvel. I think it's just a situation where you had two good parties and it just, circumstances just meant it wasn't gonna work. But I'm still sad. I wanted to see yeah. an Edgar Wright Ant-Man, I really did. And maybe this will turn out best for him. Maybe he'll make something else that's amazing. Maybe this will turn out best for Marvel because maybe now they're gonna get in a director that's more in line with their vision on it and it's gonna be great. Who knows, let's just hope for great things for all of them. Anyway, Schnepp, you and I have had <clears throat> discussions about this before, but right. your reaction to this and the various reactions you've seen around it. I'm bummed. I mean, I, I hope Edgar Wright doesn't make Small Man next. Like, he's like, I'm going to still make my Tiny small Man movie. Man. Tiny Man or uh, Little Man or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> bug Dude. Uh, but yeah, I'm really disappointed to hear that it didn't work out. But upon reflection and, and, lit, and hearing about, oh, the script changes and this and uh, eight years and you can totally see it. I don't even know if Kevin Feige was around in 2006. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't I know mean, off the top of my head. In, I, and so overall like the eight years and then he had to take a break and do world's end due to other mm -hmm. circumstances they had to rush through that just to honor some, another film you know another producer the whole bunch of different circumstances happened that kept pushing ant-man off and as ant-man got pushed off more marvel movies came out and established the tone yeah. like the the incredible hulk with edward norton you know obviously that was a little off you know they didn't continue that hulk they didn't continue mm -hmm. with edward Nor norton they're going to fix it. I'm sure they're going to have a Hulk movie with Mark Ruffalo. That would be a mistake not to. Maybe Phase Four or whatever. But they're on. They've got, they've established their universe now. So like you look at something like The Amazing Spider-Man Two, that doesn't even fit within the first Amazing Spider-Man. The, right. The, the the tones are all off, and mm -hmm. so they've got some issues over at Sony that they got to work on. Marvel is a machine. Yeah. It's a yeah. smooth running machine. Everyone's excited for Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that's going to be a smash sleeper hit because. It's exciting, it's new, but it also has that tone that we're familiar with. We're like, we're excited to see a new Marvel movie mm -hmm. that we know is coming from Marvel Central, which I guess Disney, Marvel, whatever you want. How would you define like Marvel Marvel? It's not Marvel Fox, it's Marvel <laughs> well, Marvel. or Marvel, Marvel Studios. Yeah. Marvel yeah. Studios. So Edgar Wright's Ant-Man not being a derivation, it's not part of like the weird X-Men anomaly or Fantastic Four right. or Spider-Man, it's part of this cinematic universe they, as the, the, the parent company, are wanting to mesh it in and make sure it works so Ant-Man can be in that Avengers 3. Yeah. And we can have a crossover with Black Panther or what, however they're going to work, mm -hmm. the Inhumans are in there, they're, however they want to introduce other characters. Also, Scott Lang's a, a thief, he's a villain. Um, <clears throat> it, it really depends, like we, didn't, we haven't read the script, so I'm sure there were a lot of issues that had been working, going on for over the several years that we're not aware of. Yeah. Him and Joe Cornish wrote the uh, mm -hmm. the screenplay, and then they had someone rewrite it. And I, I'm sure he was like, "This is not going to be my movie. I can't work this way." Or however that happened, and they just were like, "Let's just leave it as is." And I think the way Gunn described it is a great, a great uh, way to, metaphor, you know. So. All right, Mary. Yeah, I, I agree. I do feel like the child of divorce a little bit, you know. Like <laughs> it didn't work out, and I'm so sad. But but I think you're right. I think it, it it's. Um, there's so much that goes on that we don't know about. You know, there's so many conversations that were had and creative meetings that were that were led, and and that we'll never know. We'll never know exactly what went down and why this happened. We can speculate till we're blue in the face. The bottom line is, I just don't want to see an Ant-Man movie that's bad. And I and I think that Marvel has been doing really well with all their movies. Like yeah. generally, the quality level of Marvel movies is is pretty high. It's you know, good to really amazing. So I'm hoping that this decision is for the best of the film on both sides, that Edgar Wright felt like, okay, my vision isn't in keeping with this universe, and they felt like, okay, Edgar Wright isn't the right guy to see this vision through in a way that's cohesive with the rest of what we have going on. So, you know, it's it's a conscious uncoupling, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's really... It's just really unfortunate yeah, that it worked out it this is. way. Hey everyone, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC Movie Talk Show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.